Oh, hey there, traveler. Welcome back to the Inn of the Seven Dice. Why don't you get on inside and rest those cold bones? It's a pretty chilly one outside. Probably not going to be and around to be a bit warmer for another two or three months, so might as well buckle in. Well, yeah, that's what it's like living on the coast, right? Sometimes you have some real nice weather, but we often get a lot of the extremes. Especially now that we're missing about a third of the planet, the weather's being a bit weird, to say the least. Why don't you go over and see Wingover? He is itching to tell a story. Hey there, travelers. It's me, Wing Ever Gimbal. I miss Nan bad. I feel like it's been a little bit since I got to introduce things. Well, you know how it is. Running it in, you're pretty busy. So many people coming through. There's so many ethereal beings, you travelers. You come in here, you, you move your mouth bits, and I think you're going to try to say something to me, but I can never understand it, unfortunately. I should have taken lip reading. I feel like that's a very useful skill to a bard. Yeah, but, yeah, that's my day so far, travelers. Just thinking about how I should take lip reading. I feel like it could be a useful skill to anyone. Any kind of profession. But then again, you'll probably learn some things you really didn't want to know. You know, somebody, like, gets out of earshot, or they're outside talking to somebody, and you're like, Oh, I was just hanging out with them. What are they saying? And they're like, oh, that person was so annoying, never want to see them again. I might not learn lip reading. I think I'm going to skip it. Yeah, I'm skipping it. Travelers, it's so nice to have you back here at the end of the Seven Dice, and we are we are wrapping up this portion of the story for All Hail Prince Emzy. Today is the, the last part of it. I hope you're all very excited. It's there's still a lot going on. This was a this was a thrilling arc, I have to say. But before we get into that, uh, I got a, another piece of fan mail here. Let's see now. <clears throat> Great story! Exclamation mark. Flawless mixing, exclamation mark, must listen, double exclamation mark, five stars. I've only listened to a few episodes and I'm already hooked. They have great audio and an entertaining cast, exclamation mark. They have outstanding flawless sound effects and background music. This is a great rules light D&D actual play podcast, exclamation mark. The DM weaves magic. That is from Purple Melon 17 from the the United States of America. Well, thank you so much, Purple Melon. I, we never get a lot of fruit riding into us, uh, so it's it's nice to see that that we're finally reaching that demographic. And travelers, if you want to write in and uh, spread the word or help us reach more people's ears, head on over to the Atunes or the Pod Chaser. And you can, you could write up a, a review. Or if you don't like using words, because words are a bit of a pain, you could still just do a f the, the star review. Uh, also, they have it on... What is this? Spot Spotify. I guess it's hard to see, but when you see it, it's probably pretty good. There's Spotify. Check that out. You could just do, just do stars in there. All right, travelers. Oh, the BattleBots person should be here. Oh my god. Do you always sneak up on people like that? Yes. I do. Alright. Um, strange arachnid person that's slowly coming down from the ceiling. Um, I take it you're from BattleBots? Either that or I'm gonna have a fight on my hands? Maybe both. I am from Battlelands, and if you want to hear the sounds of insects crawling all around you, or maybe you're interested in the sound of melting bones, head on over to BattleBards.com. We've got it all. I'm just going to place this can of raid here. I think it's for ants, but you never know. Ah, travelers, as I sit here terrified, and the, the BattleBots person's getting all the instruments and strange things ready to make all the sound effects and music, I am excited to jump into this part of the tale. As I said previously, 
We have had so much going on in this very long arc for all hail Prince Emzy. So get ready, because things are still going on a bumpy ride. I present to you all hail Prince Emzy, part seven. Hey, I'm Bright, and I'm playing Kalsar, the Tiefling Paladin, and Chosen of Yetifa. Hi, uh, I'm Humberto, and I'm playing Bordon, Dwarven Cleric and Chosen of Time. I'm Evan, and I'm playing Ronnie, the Half Elf Bard and Chosen of Chaos. Hey, I'm Robert, and I'm playing MZ, the Gith Yankee Ranger. Chosen Blood. Hey, I'm Jason, and I'll be playing Drax here, the Dragonborn Artificer. And Chosen of Machines. Previously on Battle of Seven Dice, our heroes had managed to sneak their way into a dragon cave. It was literally filled with tons of dragons. After MZ made a daring move and set forth a lot of little lava from the hive, they managed to capture what they later found out was the Horn of Hell, one of the three items to put Azathoth into a deep slumber. The heroes then went and decided that they were going to try to put down the Git Yankee Lich Queen once and for all. After a very grueling battle, the Git Yankee Lich Queen cast one last spell of high magic. Unfortunately, the heroes were not able to stop her. Kelsar went flying from the tower, crashing down to the ground unconscious. Emzy was obliterated into nothing. Draxir and Ronnie tumbled down the stairs together, Ronnie the only one conscious. After Emzy spoke with truth, MZ soon regained consciousness, now on his last life. As MZ began, began to open up, up his eyes and see a horde of Gith Yankee run towards him. And uh, where we'll start off first, though, is with Ronnie and Draxir. So, Ronnie, Draxir hit into you. You managed to hit every single goddamn stair on the way down, almost like it was like some weird comedy movie. <laughs> you eventually roll like out of the door with this dragonborn just bleeding all over you. Uh huh. And you're just like kind of <laughs> laying there, and this this dragonborn's like on top of you. You look over, you see that Gith Yankee, or you're pretty sure you saw blow up, <laughs> laying on the ground, like kind of getting up, like, oh, what happened? And that tiefling is just sprawled out, and the cement mm. is like cracked all around him. Oh. Where am I? <laughs> No, no one else awake. <laughs> <laughs> MZ's starting to wake up, but he looks kind of out of it. Yeah, it's like saving saving Private Ryan. This is ringing sound, can't hear anything. Looking around. Porta Gif is charging forward. Kelsar's, instead of walking around, picking up his arm, he's just laying there all fucked up. Oh, Blood oh, spurting out yeah. of his mouth. Yeah, uh, need like a need to go find like a Pepsi or something. I'm real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess I'll go check. I guess I'll go check on some people. Uh, well, uh, and by some people, I'd... yeah, still on me. Yeah, I'm like bleeding on you. Okay, well I shake him off, and then I uh... <laughs> fucking Taylor Swift style. Such an asshole. You, uh, just poke him and see if he moves a bit. He's he's out because he's so far into the negatives. Can I reach Kelsar? Actually, Draxir and Kelsar make me a death saving throw. I, I don't pass. I got a crit of permits. <laughs> Alright, that's two failures for Draxir and one failure for Kelsar. Well, I don't have any way of healing people, so, uh... Yeah. I'm going to... 
you could attempt a medicine check to try to stabilize him, but if you fuck up, then you might kill him. Hey, I, I do have, like, an arm with medical shit on it. Maybe you can use that somehow. Maybe it's a little bit uh, autonomous, I hope. I mean, if you... <laughs> I don't have that knowledge, Jason, so... Uh... <laughs> you might just have to press a button. <laughs> I'm like, okay, is there there's shiny buttons you're saying? I'm gonna, I'm gonna press some of the shiny buttons, Lucas. Okay. And what are you doing, MZ? Um, if I can reach Kelsar, I'm just yeah. gonna cast Cure Light Wounds on him. Oh, oh. Kelsar, you are back to life. Uh, roll how many hit points Kelsar has. Okay, six points of health back. So, Kelsar, oh. you are at six hit points as you breathe in. Ronnie, you are pressing buttons. Draxir's arms like opening up. <laughs> Tools like pop out and everything as you're like just messing with it and pressing the buttons. It looks like there's a lot of surgical tools in this arm. You gonna make a make a roll? Okay. I don't know if you're gonna allow this, but can I use my flash of genius to say that like some instructions pop up on my little HUD? For the <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, Jason, let me let me remind you, Jason. Let me <laughs> yeah, remind you of something right. really quick. Oh, I can't read. There's these three dots on Ronnie's forehead. Oh, you know what? Yeah, instructions <laughs> do pop up, and Ronnie is just a <laughs> lot of words that you don't know. <laughs> uh, if I die, I'm going to fucking flame you for being illiterate when I get back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, first, Ronnie, make a medicine roll if you're going to try. I have no medicine skills. It's your wisdom modifier. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know if you have one. So guess what I have a negative one in. <laughs> Natural one. Oh, my God, it was. <laughs> you oh, got a dead. one? I got a one. What the fuck? <laughs> the fuck, Robert? <laughs> Why would you do this to me? <laughs> uh, I, there's no, there's no other explanation here. I just die somehow. Like he stabs something through my neck or something. Nothing else <laughs> makes sense. It just has to happen. What happens is Ronnie spends so much time trying to figure out what to do with the tools when he finally goes, okay, and he turns around. Draxir's dead. <laughs> yeah, because he rolled a one, so he's actually injuring you. Is the problem? If it was just a failed roll, I'd just say it's fine. But because he rolled a one on medicine, Drax here. You are once more in this area. You see the massive cogs swirling about with you. You can distantly hear the grinding cogs. Truth shows up, and if the look of surprise can be seen on a stage mask, you would see one. Truth comes up to you. Braxir, your fight with the Lich Queen seems to have cost you your life. She was extremely powerful. It was a foolish fight. Do you realize that you and your friends a single-handedly freed an entire species from enslavement and perhaps certain doom? Yes, but uh, I don't know if that's good in this case. The Gith Yankee are not a terrible people. They had a terrible ruler. And I believe you, out of everyone in your group, would know best that people under a terrible ruler aren't necessarily bad. You're right. I'm just worried about the ones that seemed possessed. What would you like your powers to be able to do? What are you looking to have from your powers that you would see as a benefit to you? I need more resilience. I can offer you one of two things and it will be up to you to choose which of these are. And he waves a hand and you see this mirage of you appear but your skin is metal. You look like you've become 
mostly a machine. Every here and there, you see like a patch of your flesh, but it looks like you would have like a metal skin that would make you have a resistance. Or he waves a hand and another mirage appears, and there's like gadgets that are built in to your chest and in your back, and they would help mitigate. So basically, it's like one helps mitigate physical damage, the other one helps mitigate elemental damage. I'll take the second option with the devices in my body. Cybernetics, if you will. You feel the symbol crawl up your body, and it coats and goes down your legs. It goes over your tail, over uh, further onto your other arm. You feel it. it's uncomfortable. It doesn't hurt, though. As you watch these small circles appear larger, these mechanical circles start appearing and like it, it looks like they're covered in like this glass and things are moving inside them little balls of energy at the moment when you take elemental damage you have a resistance to it so that means you'll be taking half damage from these attacks you look around for one final moment and truth looks at you and says you must not tell anyone that I did this for you And he places a hand on your shoulder. And the world, these spinning cogs and everything fade away. You see it goes back to a relatively busy street. You see a few Magitech automobiles zoom right on by. You go down a very familiar street where you see your house is. You go into the house and you see your wife, Mariel. She's cleaning up. And your children are sitting there and they're playing around together. They're like wrestling around. It looks like it's maybe been about uh, a few years. It's not been the five years that you thought it's been. For them, it seems like maybe two years have passed. Your children are, they've grown a decent amount. They're wrestling around. They're knocking into things. You see in your one hand of uh, one of your children is the device that you left that leaves the message for him. It seems like he's gripping onto it quite tight as they're just play fighting. And your wife, uh, she sort of shoes them out into the backyard as they're arguing with each other. And she sets a few things down on the counter and she turns around and just for a second, she looks up and her eyes widen. And she says, Drax here. Am I physically there? Is this like a vision? It seems like she sees you. So what would you say? Mallory, I've, I've returned. I'm surprised I'm back, but here I am. How is that? Po- Are you done the war? Are you coming back? No, I think I'll have to leave again, but I think I'm back for now anyways. Your arm, what happened to it? Long story short, we've been blessed with multiple lives, and I've lost a couple of them. You need to make it home, Draxir. I know you can do this doing everything I can. She embraces you and gives you a kiss, and as she's holding on to you, looking into your eyes, you feel yourself start to fade away. And she starts to feel it too, and her eyes widen a bit. You can make it home. You can do this, Draxir. Yes. Do anything I must. See you again. I'll see you very soon. And you feel yourself coming back. And you take a breath and you can hear the sounds of these Githyanki charging forward. You look, your hands open, and you see, like, Ronnie's above you with, like, uh, these medical tools, like, staring wide-eyed at you. All your spells are back, all your abilities are back, everything is back to full. And you see as all these uh, these Gith are charging towards, Kelsar is kind of getting back up on his feet while Enzi's helping him up. In your mind, think of it like you kind of know the arcane coordinates of how to get home. Remember how like you needed the Purple Mage's help to get here using Kelsar's Bracer? So you know how to get home. Okay. So now we're going to go into a skill challenge. So there's a horde of 
these creatures. Basically, uh, it's up to you if you want to try to break your way through them, or if you want to try to just hold off and maybe see if the dragons will come down to help you, because it does appear that there are some left. So it's another two rounds, uh, DC 14 and DC 16, and you need two successes or two failures for the first round, and one success or one failure for the second. God damn it. I need initiatives from everyone. Uh, 16. Also 16. Oh, there's my natural 20. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 19. <laughs> Three of you are all in the same playing field now. We start off with Ronnie. So Ronnie, there are hordes of Githyanki. The dragons that you are flying on are circling overhead. What is something you would like to do? The DC is 14 to complete this task. My thing of uh, illusion spells. Oh, your deck of illusions? Deck of illusions. Okay, yeah. I'm going to draw a card from deck of illusions. I'd say you can either do a deception or a caster check. Do a deception. 17. So you flick through these cards and you pull one out and suddenly this massive ogre covered in this battle armor appears. And starts like waving around a club and it looked like this wave was about to wash over you and Draxir and they just quickly part like fleeing from this creature as uh, this roar is echoing out around you and Draxir. And it goes uh, from Ronnie to MZ. MZ, you see lines above these gifts. Like the same lines that you saw like when you cut Gordon's string to send him back. These are just regular gifts? They look like they're the gifts who were infected by the hive. They've gone feral because of your mother's magic. Okay. For now, I'm going to stand my ground with everyone. I'll just start hacking and slashing. Are you going to try to cut the strings, or are you going to try to attack the gift? Yeah, I'll go for the string. Okay. Seven. So you see MZ is trying to slice, and he's quickly getting overwhelmed. You get a few of them, and it goes even easier than when you were trying with Gordon. And it, like you seem to be more adept at cutting at these creatures, but they start overwhelming you. And you take 10 points of damage as these gifts are just like clawing at you and trying to claw through your carapace. And we go to Drexir. So these dragons, are they kind of acting of their own will now? Can I tell? You can tell like they're still like making, because you can hear whenever they roar, it's also making a chittering sound. So you figure they're, they're still a part of the hive. And they don't seem to have gone feral either. Could one of them be close enough for me to physically like, grab hold of it if it flies in here? Uh, sure, yep. I'm going to get, go to the closest dragon, uh, touch it, and cast heroism on it, and try to board it again, I guess. Sure. Roll me either an athletics or an acrobatics if you're going to go around. That is a 15. So you go, this dragon's ripping by, you slap a hand onto it, this glow passes over the dragons, you launch yourself onto it. And it sails you upwards as these hands were just reaching for you. You feel the wind rippling by you as uh, you look down. And now, like the other dragons, they seem to, like, you've got their attention and they're all coming down to kind of, like, swoop at these feral hives and try to, like, get rid of them, disperse them, the fire is coming down. And we go to Kelsar. So Kelsar, MZ is beside you and he's getting overwhelmed. Do a charge at the Rust uh, Githyanki uh, attacking MZ. I got 17. So you manage to cut these gifts that are on MZ and like free him up. MZ, your blades are flying as you're back to back with Kelsar. Draxir, are you managing to corral the dragons down as they help just decimate these legions of gifts that are just flooding out of nowhere? Ronnie, you're hiding inside this illusion as it's scaring the gift away from you. And all of this, it happens in what seems to be like minutes of going through all of this. And MZ, this all stops the dust and smoke clear as you kind of like take like a step forward as you cut the last string of a gift. 
and you hear the squish of a creature inside of it, and you look around, and your blades are out, and you look to your left, you look to your right, and there are scores upon scores of dead Githyanki all around you, just like in that picture, that prophecy. Hmm. And you see the dragons, they all land down where all of you are. You can still hear the sounds of fighting here and there. One of the dragon's heads comes down. We need to get you out of here. So the one Draxir's on sort of like lowers itself to kind of let you guys get on it. Let's go. Yeah, jump on. I guess so. Okay. (laughs) So the dragon launches off into the sky with all of you on it. And leading the way... You all are looking over. There's sections of this Gan- Yankee city of Tulnarath that are on fire. You see, there are more Gith Yankee than there are of the Hive. It seems most of them have went to the castle and you've taken care of them. The literal obliterated tower is just like sort of barely standing above the castle as pieces of it have fallen onto it and destroyed bits and pieces of the castle. This dragon lands down near where all the portal works are set up. You see a few of the portals are swirling. There is this station, MZ. You've seen it many, many times before because you've gone in and out on trips to many other worlds. But basically, this station is there where you can kind of direct it towards wherever you want to go. Oh, can I uh, charge my bracer at one of the portals? Definitely. Okay, I'm going to do that. It takes no time at all, and you see the red gems on it light up. As we're doing that, just wondering, but who grabbed the horn? Who has the horn? Uh, we'll say Draxir does, because he was kind of dealing with Kelsar the whole time. Oh, okay. Yeah. And one thing you notice, Draxir, this horn doesn't have any pull on you at all. I'm Frodo. I'll say to Draxir that the harp is in your homeland. A harp, you say? That actually makes sense. I think I might know where it is. Will we need it? Well, somehow I think I might be able to take us to my home world. Do you want to go right away or should we stop by back somewhere? (sighs) We are missing someone. Right. Uh, I forgot about one of them. I'm trying to think about it for a second. (laughs) There's someone who we <laughs> have. Is it? Steve. That's... We need to grab Steve. <laughs> Steve. No, guys, Steve. Borodon. Bar... No, we gotta get Borodon. We should go and get Borodon. Yeah, we need Borodon first. We're gonna need a stand, I'm just saying. That's, that's true. That stand is powerful. It's the strongest member of the party. Okay, so uh, would you like to set the portals up to point towards Sanctuary? I think so. Yeah. We do want to get borrowed on back, so... Yeah, I, uh, I'm still not doing too great. As a DM who would have had to plan a bunch of solo stuff with board on and then do two schedules, I appreciate <laughs> consolidating <laughs> this for me. <laughs> it's okay, we'll split the party again right away, so... We could have some fun board on adventures. Uh, it's fine. So this portal MZU mess around with the panel that's right by it pretty quickly, and you see this image start appearing. You see Bordon is standing, and he's moving incredibly slowly, and you know this is because time moves differently on the astral plane. And you see he's moving incredibly slowly, and there are a lot of cultists around him. And you see a Bernard busybody starting to walk towards him, like, hand waved, like, hi! Like, smiling, super stoked to see Bordon. Ah, shit. Bernard's a friendly guy. Switch the portal, just go somewhere else. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Do you go through the portal? Yeah, let's go. Through that portal. So, Bordon, you're standing there frazzled. Your hair is, like, kind of, like, messed up. Normally, it's very well groomed. You have, like, some cut marks, dents, and everything. And you look around. You're like, oh, my God. 
There's so many of these calls is coming out and suddenly you hear like this crackling behind you. You turn around, Kelsar covered in blood with these like massive wings behind him steps through a portal along with MZ who now has, it looks like a, like a carapace over his skin as he's walking through. His eyes are kind of glowing a little bit and Draxir walks out with like these lights that are shining on different parts of his body that are emanating like different colors as a, and then Ronnie comes like stumbles out behind all of them like looking like what the fuck's going on and now you're all standing in front of many many cultists and the portal closes behind them as you look out at all of these cultists that are all smiling and looking at all of you and that's where we'll stop this one Meanwhile, in an undisclosed location, in the spine of the world. Father Matthews. Hmm. One of the Gith Yankee Hive members. So, what do you have to report? I was traveling along with my companions when I heard through the hive mind that they intend to betray Dora. Really? Just so I understand things. Don't all you hive work together in a hive mind? Shouldn't you then be betraying Dorm as well? Yes, we do have a hive mind, and we are connected. But we still have our independence. I wish to serve the Shining God. I wish to aid Dorm. I want to tell Dorm about this betrayal. Are there any more of your kind that are turning against the Hive? There was a larger group of us, but all of them have gone feral. I am the last remaining, but I believe I'll be able to convince a number of my brethren to join me to aid the Shining God. Good, good. Dorum will be very, very pleased to hear this. Too bad she won't, though. What are you... Sorry there, chum. I'm afraid you can't get in the way of my plans. I've been working on this one for a while. You won't get away. Oh, but that's where you're wrong. I am, and I will. Sometimes the kill is just too easy. You don't even feel anything anymore. Ah, well. Time to get back to work. Seems death shifts on the move again. <laughs> oh, poor Draxia. He didn't even know that was the clone Ronnie, not the actual Ronnie, so he had no healing capabilities. Oh, the pain. Now three of them are on their last life. This is a very difficult moment for Death Shift. You see, they got very comfortable just being able to rush into moments and die and not really have to worry about it and continue to get stronger. But now, if three of them die, they can become an incredibly terrifying enemy. Something that could very much shatter the magic that Death Shift has. I suppose we'll have to see what happens to our heroes, dear travelers. If you've been enjoying the show, head on over to 
via Tunes or Spotify or Podchaser and leave us one of those lovely reviews. It helps out. If you want to get yourself a, a nice Ballad of the Seven Dice shirt, then head on over to BalladOfTheSevenDice.com and click on the store and head on over and just grab yourself something good. It's always fun. And if you want to hear more good Ballad of the Seven Dice things, uh, you want to maybe try out uh, uh, some more one-shots that we have or, or hear some audio dramas that we work on, head over to our Patreon and just for a, a single dollar, you too can have, uh, I think it's maybe 15 extra hours of Ballad content. That's quite a bit. Also, dear travelers, we have been sponsored, that's right, sponsored, wowzers, by... Podbean. If you want to have your own uh, bardic tale, you want to try out sending your voice across the multiverse for other people to hear your bardic stories, then head on over to podbean.com slash ballad, the number seven, and dice, and enjoy a free month of Podbean just to see if you like it, see if that's what works for you. We use it and it's quite good. I have one last announcement, dear travelers. On our... What is... What is Twitch? What is... On our Twitch streams, we have a show going called Rise of Nyarlatha... Isn't that an outer god? Rise of Nyarlatha... Uh, And for the next foreseeable future, probably uh, a couple months... We are doing giveaways on our streams of TTRPG products. For instance, the next session that'll be on January 18th will be a Monster of the Week giveaway. And January 26th will be a Thirsty Sword Lesbians giveaway. And these have been brought to us by a sponsor from Roll20. So, if you want to try to enter into that, all you need to do is... Follow us on Twitch, use the chat so we can see your name and enter it into the draw during the episode, and at the end of the stream, we pull out the winner's name. Okay. Woo! All right, travelers, you've had a lot of me today. I'm honestly pretty wiped. I'm going to get ready to lie down and spray my entire room with raid before I go to bed. All right, travelers. Until next time. I bid you all adieu.